It's rare in sports for a broadcaster to save the life of a competitor, but in auto racing, it happens several times. Dr. Jerry Punch was equally skilled behind a microphone and as a drama doctor. At racetracks in the 1980s, Dr. Punch was directly responsible for saving the lives of three separate drivers. In the early 80s, Dr. Jerry Punch balanced two roles as both broadcaster for MRN and a trauma doctor in Daytona Beach. During a practice day at Daytona on February 9, 1982, he was on duty as a doctor in the track hospital. That day, the driver in need was Bill Dennis. The 45-year-old was a 1970 Cup Series Rookie of the Year and won the sportsman race at Daytona three straight years between 1972 and 1974. On this Tuesday afternoon, the journeyman driver was trying to qualify for the Daytona 500 in the third round of time trials. As he came through turn four to take the green flag, his car turned sideways, corrected, and spun head-on into the outside wall. At this moment, everything went black for Dennis. He later remembered it as the most terrifying moment of his life. As the car sat destroyed near the exit of turn four, Dennis said he had an out-of-body experience. He could vividly remember seeing his body drifting upwards through clouds and into bright sunlight, unable to move his arms and legs. He believed he was dead at this moment. Then it returned to darkness. Dennis had a crushed larynx, amongst other injuries, that included a concussion, dislocated shoulder, and broken foot. The ambulance brought him to the infield hospital, where Dr. Punch and Dr. A.J. Adessa were awaiting. One of the men carrying the stretcher informed the doctors that Dennis was dead. He had no pulse wasn't breathing, and his skin was cold. The doctors worked for minutes, getting oxygen to his lungs and performing CPR. Finally, his heart started beating again, and Dennis awoke suddenly, his eyes shooting open with a shocked look on his face, as if he had seen a ghost. Dennis never raced again, but the quick work to revive him by Dr. Punch and Dr. Edessa undoubtedly saved his life. Six years later, Dr. Punch was again in the right position to save another life at Bristol on August 26, 1988. We told you that it's been a very interesting day here at Bristol, and there was near tragedy that occurred on the racetrack just after the uh, uh, practice begun for the Winston Cup cars. This is Rusty Wallace in a violent end-over-end -end flip coming off of quarter number four. The car overturned several times, finally coming to a rest on its wheels against the pit wall. When the car came to rest, Dr. Punch ran to the car and found Rusty unconscious. Even worse, he wasn't breathing. It was later said that he was choking on a sandwich he had eaten before practice. A human can go roughly five minutes without breathing before brain damage occurs and the body goes into cardiac arrest. The crushed roof made it impossible to extract Wallace in that short of a time. Dale Earnhardt rushed to the car and tried to help break through the windshield. Well, I didn't get there first. Doc Punch was there with him. Uh, I come around and they had just crashed and I just come out of pit, so... You know, I seen he was leaned over in the car, so I jumped out of the car and went over and see if we could help. Uh, you know, the doctor was right there and uh, rescue people and uh, a lot of the other crew members and drivers were there too. So, you know, everybody just really helped with getting the metal off the car where they could get him out and everything. As crews cut the roof off, Dr. Punch stood at the window with his hand in Wallace's mouth to clear his airway and keep him breathing. Without this medical intervention, Wallace could have experienced a medical emergency before getting to the ambulance. Instead, he recovered enough to start the race one night later. Rusty is okay. He is admitted tonight in the hospital, and hopefully we'll be out later on tonight or in the morning. Less than three months after the Bristol crash, Dr. Punch saved another driver in the season-ending ARCA race at Atlanta. This time, it was during a broadcast he was working. Here he is crossing the stripe and completing lap 52 and a crash. Oh, a terrible crash. Up in turn number four as one car impacted the uh, pit wall. And we now confirm that the uh, car that was involved and became airborne and overturned was the number 50 machine driven by Don Marber and the rescue effort there continues. At the other end of pit road, Punch was told by an official that the driver had died in turn four. He clipped his microphone on his belt and ran to the scene of the accident. When he got to the car, Marmor was unconscious with his steering wheel pushed back into his chest. He had broken ribs, bruised lungs, a broken leg, a broken foot, and crushed hands. Dr. Punch climbed through the shattered windshield and quickly needed to revive Marmor's heart. While still in the destroyed car, Dr. Punch inserted an IV line directly into his heart. He was pulled from the car and rushed to the infield care center, where Dr. Punch directed the attending doctors on what to do. 
After stabilizing, Marmor was airlifted to a nearby hospital. And here is Don Marmor who is being taken from the infield care center. There you can see our Dr. Jerry Punch who has been one of the doctors uh, attending to him. He will be airlifted to a local hospital and once again when we get a report we'll have it for you. Marmor was unconscious for the next three weeks. He was hospitalized until the following March. And while he never raced again, Marmor recovered to live a normal life. Dr. Jerry Punch remained a trusted friend to racers, but fortunately his emergency skills were needed less as time went by. Before race car safety was improved and better trained responders came along, sometimes life or death was decided by a man who held a microphone.